What's up, guys? Welcome to another dev blog recap. This one is called Tourist Season. This is the big one. It's just come out here on May 13th, so let's get into it. I'm going to skip a bit of this uh, italicized text here because it's not really uh, pertinent. It's just kind of uh, back lore. So I will post it uh, in the description and you guys can read through it. So basically, they explain uh, that the tourists are coming because Bente has set this precedent. So um, and they want art, culture and proper grub. So with tourist season, we're bringing some color and entertainment to your cities. People far and wide have heard about your vast capitals, your museum collections, and the delicacies from all around the globe, which you have, which you have on offer. In this dev blog, we'll go over all the new features of the tourist season DLC, the tourists themselves, their needs, the bus systems, restaurants, recipes, the new goods you need to produce, and the Iron Tower, a new multi-age monument or multi-stage monument for your cities. It's not all about the tourists themselves, though, as fulfilling their needs does have a direct impact on your existing population, as you will soon learn. So that was something I was wondering about. So this is going to be pretty neat. So tourists and hotels. Tourists are, new, are a new resident tier in the old world who stay in, a, in your city overnight in contrast to visitors who only arrive for a day trip to see most of the exciting cultural spots. First, you need to attract them, and the basis for this is upgrading your public mooring. This can be done with 500 engineers. So pretty early on in your engineer career, you'll be able to upgrade your public mooring. Which means that the next thing to do is build hotels. These are imposing, elegant establishments, which are expensive in construction and take up quite some space with their size of 9x7. So my previous video was correct. They are 9x7. But make up for it with their impressive looks, but also with a, ca a capacity of up to 500 tourists each. So the hotel is a residence building. It's just like any other um, residence that you build, except it's 9x7 and it can house up to 500 tourists. Um, in order to attract more tourists and fill your hotels to the brim, you need to fulfill their exquisite needs. These are again split into basic needs and happiness needs and are, are a mix of existing and new products, new food, drink venues, as well as cultural buildings like the Variety Theater, the zoo, and the museum. So that's interesting that they said Variety Theater. I didn't pick up on that last time. So Variety Theaters will be part of this system. So let's keep that uh, in the back of the brain. So it says, who's the tourist? Um, this is from the, Matt, the lead, nar lead narrative designer. Do not let their over-familiarity and lively conversation fool you. The tourist is an informed critic and uh, uh, is very particular when it comes to food and drink, uh, blah, blah, blah. They're picky. So we're not, we're not going to fly through all this because this is going to be way too long of a video. So here's a, another high, highly detailed render of the actual hotel um, with uh, you know some shrubs around it and stuff, making it look all pretty. Um, while you can easily spot the status of each need via the hotel's UI, just like you can with normal buildings. So you click the hotel, it'll tell you the needs. There's a, there's a change on how happiness impacts your new tourist population. So we need to, we need to talk this one out here. The fulfillment of a need can be limited by their happiness. This is marked with an unhappy red icon next to the respective need and the info to which percentage a need can be currently fulfilled. So the second tab, which is normally your happiness and stuff that you don't really care about, that will directly affect the needs of the first tab of your residence. So the, the kind of the second page, if you will, um, of your residence will also matter. Um, so you're going to have to be very careful with um, happiness and needs. You're going to have to do both. You can't do one and not the other, basically. Possible causes for limits can be low island attractiveness, a lack of variety when it comes to hot spots like museums. So if you only have museums and you don't have zoos, there's going to be an issue. Solve these issues to make sure tourists are willing to visit your island and to maximize the number of potential tourists in your city. So basically to raise the population of your hotel up to and, and you know, nearing that 500 mark, you're going to have to fulfill a lot of these different needs, but also their happiness as well. So Let's say you have an island with a bunch of factories on it and it's always going to be polluted. That's going to be a serious, serious problem uh, for your overall tourism forever until you move that off. Um, happy, happy tourists spend more money in your city. And since the pockets of these wealthy individuals are well filled, it's definitely worth fulfilling their demanding needs. So you're going to make a lot of money from tourists. So it'll be very interesting to see how this changes kind of your your mid game because um, Docklands you get at artisans and then you can start with Docklands and 
you know, really work that up. And then once you get your engineers, um, maybe you go straight into tourists and you can make a lot more money than you would uh, with tourists than you would with maybe investors. Like maybe you would rather have tourists than investors focus on that for a bit and then branch off and do investors again. I don't know. We'll have to see. Um, we said above that tourists are new resident tier. As part of that mechanic, they're also providing a sort of workforce, which we called customers. So this is, again, we need to be listening here. These are essential for your restaurants, bars, and cafes, which thrive on tourism. For them to work at 100% capacity, a certain number of customers is required. If a venue lacks customers, the buff to the surrounding residences is decreased. More on that in the next paragraph. So keep listening. Lastly, we, we need to warn you that tourists are, are a spoiled demanding bunch. Let's not say lazy and absolutely no fans of long walks. So in order to fulfill their needs, you need to set up a complete bus network on your island with bus stops next to all important places. We'll go into detail on the bus system later in this dev blog. And we've also touched on this from the previous dev blog, which I will link uh, somewhere now. So basically the, all of the, um, the bus stops need to be linked. All of the roads need to be green basically to create uh, a sort of mesh network for your bus stops so that they can go to your museums and your zoos, et cetera, your restaurants and your variety theaters. This is going to be, this is a, a real DLC that I'm excited about because it's really tying in a lot of things that were kind of like loose ends. Um, DLC syn synergy owners of any previous DLC can lo look forward to a certain level of internet interconnectivity, which gives them alternative ways of fulfilling your tourist needs. So ingredients from the Arctic or in Bessa open up new recipes. Um, how about a dish of fresh lobster or caribou meat while visiting your impressive docklands or a mighty palace can distract tourists from the fact you didn't build a museum. So your docklands and your palaces are also tourism style buildings that need to be accounted for in the bus system or in the bus stop system. So they're trickling in a lot of info here that you really need to pay attention to. So, um, a lot of, you know, almost, this is almost a leak really, um, restaurants, cafes, and bars. So we created a place to stay for our tourists. But as mentioned above, they're rather more demanding than your regular visitors and having an attractive island with a zoo or museum is not enough. When staying for several days, color, culinary needs naturally become a matter of great import or great of, or of great import or great importance. I don't know, uh, which, which makes the tourist request for restaurants, cafes, and bars quite understandable. So all three buildings function in a similar way to public service buildings, but in a more challenging way, since there are new, there's a new recipe system and therefore combine products. They, they combine production and public service. So it's an, it's really a new class of building. Um, Based on the rest on the recipe you choose, the building will prepare a dish, dessert, or drink and fulfill the tourist needs while also providing a boost to regular residences in a certain area. So these are kind of like town halls. This is going to be like actually pretty crazy. And you can see here, um, this is bread, fish, and chocolate for Archduke's schnitzel recipe. And over here we've got stro strogoff goulash recipe, uh, beef, red peppers, and corn. So you're going to have to go to different regions, or you're gonna have to use Docklands very heavily to get these recipes completed. Um, so as you can see, each recipe requires certain ingredients. Make sure you got a warehouse not too far away. So you're gonna need a warehouse to get uh, supplies to your restaurants, bars, and cafes as well. So that's another thing that was never mentioned before. Some recipes might require ingredients from different sessions or different worlds, whatever, uh, while others have ingredients that are easier to obtain. Since we're always looking for new systems to try out and ways to spice up your gameplay, we came up with the recipe system as a new challenge. So this is an end game type of challenge where you really need to have production chains dialed in to really get this to work. All recipes fulfill the tourist need for restaurants, cafes, and bars in the same way. Um, they will enjoy, enjoy any of the delicious dishes you can present them. However, the aforementioned boost to the surrounding residents varies. So the town style, the town hall, pardon me, style effect is going to vary depending on, I'm assuming the difficulty of the recipe that you pick. So they say, if your restaurant, for example, serves the Archduke's schnitzel, then your surrounding residents will receive a plus three boost to their happiness while consuming less bread, fish, and chocolate. If you choose the Strogoff goulash, nearby residents receive a plus two happiness boost and consume less fish, sausage, and canned food. So that'll be good for your artisans if you got, uh, you know, a bunch of artisans or engineers for the the, the minus uh, canned food consumption. 
Uh, what did Dominic, the game designer, say? We had flour, sugar, and chocolate, but could not bake a cake. That always floated around in our heads when thinking about a new content. The recipe system solves this and allows us to, to combine goods to new products that would otherwise be too specific for our normal needs system. Restaurant placement as well as choosing recipes based on the required ingredients and the surrounding residences with the respective needs should provide you with a nice puzzle challenge if you love optimization. So yeah, there's going to be uh, a very... Um, the meta is going to change. 100% this changes the meta. Uh, selecting any of these three types of buildings will display their influence radius with a circle while the affected residences are additionally highlighted. So they're actually highlighted now instead of just... Uh, they used to just be like blue lines on the floor of the building and now the entire building actually gets highlighted, which is kind of cool. So uh, it has a very much... Uh, it very much has a town hall style effect, uh, area of effect, if you will. More recipes are unlocked via, oh wow, I didn't even see this. More recipes are unlocked either via quests from the tourist or by fulfilling certain conditions. Have a look at the recipe book for details. So you're not just going to get all the recipes. You actually have to fight for them. That's cool too. That's just more game time. Like that's just more gameplay and more things to grind for. Um, this is the tutorial in-game tutorial with the maturity of Anno 1800 and being the third season of DLCs, a lot of new features unlock with the artisan level. This can result in a lack of focus by the players in our onboarding, leading to them not understanding the features and ending up with bad gameplay. Uh, Dockland introduced new gameplay concept. We felt the players would uh, benefit from being able to reference the concepts explanation um at their own pace outside of the onboarding flow so there's now like an actual tour or tutorial um system or uh, virtual book so to speak so that'll be cool that's good for new players um here's another curveball um orchard orchards and chemical plant so of course using only existing goods to fulfill the needs of your tourists and for the creation of delicious new dishes would be boring so let us introduce to you two new production buildings the orchard and the chemical plant so there's even more stuff in this dlc um, orchards pr produce new agricultural goods with which are either directly fulfilling to the tourist needs like jam or are functioning as input goods for recipes they function similarly to your lumberjacks huts by planting trees in an area around them. You do not have to build fields like you do for a red pepper or a vineyard, which would have required a rework, uh, blah, blah, blah. Lumberjack huts already had such a system in place where they can modify their surroundings by growing trees. The new goods all required trees, so using this system was, a, was much more fitting. Not all the special new ingredients can be grown in the old world, so you have to make some space in the new world to also build orchards there. Only then can you provide goods like cinnamon, camphor wax, or citrus fruits, or new products like shampoo, or for, pardon me, for new products like shampoo or lemonade. More on that in a second. Similar to restaurants, orchards are also using a recipe system where you can select the seed you want the respective orchard to grow from a catalog however orchards don't need any input goods so totally totally new way to uh to grow crops effectively also using the recipe system also using the recipe system is the chemical plant Patents for three new consumer goods are available to you. All three products are highly requested by your tourists. So there's the chemical plant, which I believe will be in your old world, um, blah, 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 will produce things for your tourists. Um, they produce fruity lemonade using saltpeter or salpetre, sugar and citrus fruits, soapy shampoo using soap, cinnamon and coconut butter, and souvenirs using glass, camphor wax and cotton to make your tourists happy. Both the orchards as well as the chemical plant need a warehouse nearby to gather input goods and deliver the finished product. So that's that's pretty obvious. So then the, we've touched on this before, but the bus system, we're going to fly through this a little bit. As mentioned at the beginning, there's not enough to simply have a great zoo or a five-star restaurant. Tourists are demanding and they don't want to travel too far on foot. This is where the bus system comes into play. So there's going to be, effectively, they're saying there's bus stops. Um... And this starts with your public mooring and extends to places like variety theaters, restaurants, bars, museums. When placing a bus stop, you'll have to pay attention to two influence radiuses. 
For a building to be reachable by the tourists, it has to be in the circle radius, which is the blue. And I messed this up last time. This means if your zoo is outside the circle, it's not part of your bus network and the zoo need for your tourists will not be fulfilled. So 100%, you need to have a bus stop um, encompassing the radius of every single building that you want your tourists to visit. Second indicator you have to keep an eye on is the green street overlay. Now, again, I missed, I missed this, missed this up in the last video. Um, this marks the overall reach of your bus network for a bus stop to be connected to the network. It's green overlay has to overlap with the existing network. So all roads must be green period. Um, and dark green, not, not the light crappy green, uh, blah, 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 blah. Keep on an eye on your needs, uh, to spot these kinds of problems. So yeah, last week's blog touches on that in detail. So we're not even done yet. We have the iron tower. Nothing impresses your tourists more than monuments. So it's only logical to give you a completely new monument to build the Iron Tower, kind of like the Eiffel Tower. Um, like other monuments, it's constructed in three stages. And when finished, not only increases your island's attractiveness, but also provides another option to buff surrounding residences. The Reine, or the Queen, the finest restaurant in the land, offers three unique recipes to choose from, each providing a strong buff and reducing the consumption of specific goods um, but requiring four ingredients instead of the usual three. So it's like a buffed out gigantic restaurant effectively. Who could say no to the trifle tower? The, the, the probably most majestic of all desserts. Okay. Um, there's one more special fear feature about the iron tower by assigning additional tourist customers to it, which they don't really touch on. So we'll have to figure that out by assigning additional tourist customers to it. You can greatly increase the influence radius of its buff when placed at a central location. It might even cover your whole city. So gigantic buff. And let's not forget that such an extravagant monument might, might indeed attract Royal attention. Okay. Okay. The queen visits maybe that'd be cool. Last but not least, as it is now tradition, tourism will also come with a beautiful bunch of themed ornaments fitting to the setting. Build a souvenir shop, a lookout point, signposts, flower beds, and more to turn your cities into authentic hot tourist hotspots. As usual, we'll release a free game update, so that's game update 11, alongside the tourist season DLC featuring uh, several quality of life improvements. I've actually touched on those in my previous video, as well as bug, fi bug fixes. We'll have the full release, release notes for you next week, so we'll, we might cover that as well. Uh, tourist season releases May 25th from 5 to 6 p.m. CEST, mark it in your calendars. So this is uh, a massive summary of the tourist season DLC. Uh, I hope I didn't talk your ear off. You might have to watch this video twice, to be honest, because I might have to watch it as well. Um, and again, my name is Mr. Elliot. I stream on Twitch. If you guys could hit a like on this video, if you made it this far, that'd be really cool. Um, I will be streaming this as soon as it comes out. So uh, I hope to see you guys there. And if not, I will catch you on YouTube for another video. Um, much love and thanks again, guys. Bye now.